you know, for example, right now you're, you're going after AIG, and we can talk about it, but one of the things you want to do is break that company up. I assume that you want to own that company only for the period of which it would be that it would get broken up and then you'd want to leave, no? Not necessarily, sometimes, a lot of times. But you talk about activists, let's, let's go for the first one. I still own it, 31 years, ACF. Well, let me tell you a little story about ACF. You know, I don't mind, you can listen a few minutes, have your drinks a few minutes later for something, but I'll tell you the fast little story here. <laughs> so I was a kid, you know, 31 years ago, compared to today, and I see this ACF and I'm, I'm a workaholic and I keep working on companies. I see this company sells for 30 bucks. And I'm looking at the rail cars they own, and I look at all the stuff that they got. They don't make any money. And I look at the, you know, I'm an old gray Madad guy. I still am. And, and, and you look and say, this is so cheap. So I take all the money. I make, I, by that time, I had, I, uh, you, know, it, uh, you know, I had a fair amount of money. I mean, nothing like today, I guess, but enough to, you know, put in four or five hundred million or borrow it or whatever I did. And I bought a lot of the stock. So now we're going in and we're saying, you know, this is so cheap, it's 30 bucks, and they got all these assets, they're not making any money, but what the hell? So I finally get control of the company, I get the company, and now I go in, and you know, I'm a good math guy, I, I don't believe in micromanaging, so I meet the CEO, and he says, oh, Mr. Eichel, I would love to have you, I mean, we had a, after a bit of fight, we still love to have you aboard, you know, boom, 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 I said, great, let's be friends. So they manufactured rail cars, I won't bore you with the details, but they, and they had a lot of companies, and in the rail car business, the secret is very simple, that you make rail cars, but the government wants to incentivize you. So the government says, okay, you get, you, in other words, you can depreciate the rail car over five, six, seven years, but you can keep it for 40 years. So you get this great depreciation, so it's great tax incentive. So the secret is you gotta make money though, to, to use the tax benefits, right? So these guys kept buying companies, and every company they bought, they lost money. So that's what was the real problem. So now I go, and they got 12 floors on 3rd Avenue, when real estate was pretty good, I was the early 80s. And I say, okay, you are the guys that lease the rail cars. You are the guys that do all the darn work. And that's a true story, and it's sort of amazing, but it still applies a lot to today, maybe not as much. Well, pretty much as much. You're gonna, you're gonna listen to this, and it's hard to believe, I know. So I go in, and I, you know, I'm a good math guy, I was good numbers guy, I was a good poker player, I'm gonna go understand what they do. So, they said, Mr. Icon, take, go to the 12th floor. We go to the 12th floor, and I write a yellow pad, and they try to explain it, blah, 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 and you do this. And these guys do this, these guys do that. I go to the 7th floor, new guy. Spend the whole day, go home, take a look at my yellow pad. I can't figure out what the hell they do. So I go back the next day, and I'm the 7th floor, 9th floor, 8th floor, boom, boom, boom. And I say, I'm not an idiot. I can't figure out what the hell they do. It's like razzle-dazzle. This guy does that. And I start asking, well, what do you need him to do that? Oh, this is very arcane stuff. You're not going to understand it. I say, okay, fine. So finally, I say to him, I'm going to St. Louis. I want to see the guy who's the COO. I want to see the guy that manages the stuff, that makes the real cars. You know, don't go, Mr. Icon. Don't go. So I say, well, why shouldn't I go? He said, they're scared of you. I said, what do you mean scared? What did I do? He said, nah, they depend on us. They depend on us. And we tell them what to do, and they're very worried that you might do something with us. I said, well, I'm not threatening to do anything, but I'd like to see it. But don't go. So I go back, 8th floor, 9th floor, 7th floor, boom, 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 boom. Go back home, can't figure out what the hell's going on. So I said, screw these guys. So I call the guy, his name is Joe, in St. Louis. I said, look, Joe, I want to come see you. And see, of course, Mr. Icon, I'd love to see you. I said, do me a favor, don't tell the CEO I'm coming. I just want to come myself and talk to you, but don't get nervous about anything. He said, why should I be nervous? I said, you're right. This guy, Joe, is like a John Wayne character. He was a captain in the Marines, a tough guy. I was scared of him. And, 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 I, and I'm sitting there looking at him, we're talking and we're laughing, and he's showing me stuff. I understand what he does. He goes this, that, boom, boom, boom. So I said, I want to have a drink with you. So we go out and have a drink. And we're sitting there having a martini, the two of us. I said, Joe, I want to ask you something. I don't want you to think that he intend to do anything because I don't want you to be nervous. He goes, why should I be nervous? I said, I just want to tell you I can't, I, I wouldn't know, how many of those guys in New York you need to support your operation here? Because I honestly can't figure out what they do. And he says, I'll tell you what you should do. I'll tell you how many supports I need. I need minus 30. So I go, I say, Joe, what the hell does that mean, minus 30? Because you don't have the balls to do what I'll tell you to do. Just like that. I said, what's that? Get rid of all of them tomorrow. Get rid of all of them. 
and I'll need 30 people less that have to support them with the numbers that they don't need from me. So, so I go and I say, hey, it's unbelievable. I can't believe this. Now, today, I would have done it immediately, got rid of the whole bunch of 12 floors. But then I still was wondering, you know, maybe this guy's Joe's a little crazy. You know, how could I get rid of 12 floors of people? So I figured, how do I do that? And meanwhile, and meanwhile I knew the guy who owned the building. And he said, you know, Carl, I could use the lease if you get out. And I don't think these people do anything. I watch them. And I go, I said, bullshit, he's a real estate guy. What the hell does he know? So I now go and I figure, what the hell do I do? So there's a consultant around. And, you know, consultants are okay sometimes, you know, not too often, but sometimes. But I, I brought these guys in, nice guys, Columbia University at those days, and they were the great leasing experts of the world. You know, leasing, they do this for all these companies. I call them in, three guys come in, and one is a professor at Columbia, and he says, Mr. Icon, we understand your problem. Very arcane. I said, yeah, I heard that word before, really arcane. So I say, I want to know what they do. Don't worry about it. Three weeks, we'll be back. It's a quarter of a million dollars. I said, okay, I'll pay you a quarter of a million. Come back in three weeks. They come back in three weeks. Now, this is sort of hard to believe, and, but it typifies America, but people don't, don't believe it. Comes back in three weeks with book like this. Big book, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yellow graphs, grid graphs, green graph. I say, hey, I ain't going to read this book. I said, and I'm colorblind anyway. So, so I said, so I say, all I want you to do, here's a yellow pad. I did very well in school. I'm a numbers guy. Tell me what they do. And I said, here's your quarter of a million bucks. And I give it to him. And he looks at me, he smiles. He says, you know something? You've been square with us, Mr. Icon. You seem like a good guy. So I'm going to tell you something. We don't know what they do either. <laughs> I, and I'm not, and I'm, not, I'm not joking. I am not joking. But here's the funniest thing. I mean, it's really sort of funny. I said, screw it. I called Joe up. You know, he comes over. He said, great, great, do it. I, you know, I gave him this severance. Nobody was mad. Got rid of the whole 12 floors. Sold the lease for $10 million. That was a lot then. And, and, and if you shut down a grocery store, let's say you, you, you bought a grocery store and shut it down, you'd hear from somebody, you know, somebody didn't get the apples right, you know, somebody, the pears were rotten or something. If you had a flower shot, the, you know, the, the, the roses wilted. It was like out of a science fiction movie. It's like they never existed. I never got a letter. I never got anybody calling me. It's they left. It was, it was like an e one of those bombs, you know, that just hit the thing and, and you know, kills all the people and, and, and the building stays. And, but but I, follow, I follow those principles a lot in what I do. There are very many companies, there are very many companies where, and it's nobody's fault really, but it's just the CEO doesn't care, he's making a lot of money, and today it's very dangerous because a lot of these mediocre companies are borrowing money, and they're borrowing money very cheaply.